All right, oh, yeah, I hope this uh, this angle works. Uh, like I've mentioned before, this game upstairs here, the uh, the February 1916 Western Front scenario for Duvel Krieg. Um, it's just like a jigsaw puzzle for me that I would have uh, that I'd put on a coffee table and just occasionally make some moves whenever I feel like it or whatever, you know, like you know, put the pieces in and so on and so forth. And um, that's it. I'll go. Over, so I'm right now trying to figure out how to do the uh, the French forces to set them up. Um, I've written down the special restrictions. I'll go over them quickly, and um, yeah, I'll try to explain what's uh, part of my thought process here or whatever. I think I mentioned this. So anything on the orange line and below, um, it says that the uh, the French can only have um, one. Uh, infantry or cavalry division per hex and there's no artillery units uh, listed. I don't know if you can see this but this is where I wanted to uh, to, t uh, to mount an attack um, and to get towards these double rail lines and Metz um, and also for once uh, in my narrative I've often wished uh, to try to be, if I was going to be the French, is to try to get some French troops onto German um, soil and see how that makes them feel kind of thing. So anyways, I thought this was a good one because it's off the... Uh, um, I've broken their river bonus with this guy uh, just uh, northeast of Nancy and they do not have... it's all clear train so that would be nice. Now let's just pretend... oh yeah, now let's go over the other special restrictions quickly. I can only place that setup on this one here, right where Vardin is, to um, it's to uh, represent their, the historical situation at the time where there was barely anybody around. Uh, uh, they were well, it was poorly defended. How's that? Uh, can only place at setup a maximum of two infantry divisions in Verdun. That's that hex there, and th these infantry divisions cannot be greater than six strength points in total. I, um, the French also have to reduce a hundred strength points um, from the uh, from the list. It's pretty massive, but uh, I've got to do it. There's 10 army headquarters. Um, I've got an unbelievable, well, for me, um, French players, a combined total of 150 strength points. Um, I can reserve 10 in infantry divisions um, and not put them on the setup because the Entente set up first, then the Germans, and then I can um, really, and then I put on those 10. Um, infantry divisions wherever I want except I'm not allowed it says there is a little there is a thing there I'm not allowed to just uh, pop them on wherever the hell I want only one division that was held back to be placed after the Germans can be uh, placed on a single hex after that and of course I still have to deal with the the six in, uh, the six stacking limits so I have to deal with that uh, obviously uh, the French forces can be in any sector, but uh, only in or adjacent to flank hexes of another nation's sector. Uh, I'll deal with that a little bit over there. It's not a big deal, because that's not my main focus. Uh, forces can use rail movement through another nation's sector, but cannot end their turn in another nation's sectors, uh, even in trained, unless they are French forces, and again, can only be in or adjacent to a flank hex. And I thought this was totally cool. Because um, in one of the talks that uh, I attended earlier in the week, it was on the Neville Offensive, and um, they talked about uh, there was a lot of historical infighting between the armies from different sectors trying to use rail lines, and so I was just like, whoa, this is pretty neat. So I took a look, uh, counted up the hexes here, and it's basically, if I wanted to, it's roughly about uh, four, uh, four hexes or 80, uh, 80 kilometer wide uh, front per army. It's not the way I'm going to be uh, going about it. So I haven't figured out how I'm going to go about it. But I was like, uh, for one, th well, one thing I'm going to do uh, specifically is trying to figure out where Patan is here. Um, obviously, Patan did not have the entire front. He was brought in towards, you know, to, to defend uh, Verdun over there. And even then it says here in the, um, the setup, sorry, I'm going off to the side here, it says, uh, the Battle of Verdun was actually, actually lasted until December of 1916 because in this, uh, in uh, the Duvel Krieg setup, you know, I'll pop it on over if you can quickly see it, maybe you can. Um, it's uh, the turn, fi uh, turn 5 of February 1916, remember there's seven turns per month, and turn 5 of April 1916, so there you go. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm walking the train as a, as a general. That's the way I'm looking at it. I'm not going to just start slapping armies on uh, willy-nilly uh, to find... I, I, I need to find out 
lots and lots and lots of things uh, way beforehand. I need to see where the terrain is massively. Uh, so the first thing I wanted to do was identify uh, locations for both sides that could be attacked uh, from three hexes at uh, bare minimum and um, had uh, only clear terrain um, that they would have to worry about. Now let's pretend there's no trenches. Okay, I'll deal with all the trench uh, nonsense later about how that's going to affect um, you know, um, hits and so on and so forth. I just wanted to look at where the most sensitive spots for by, uh, either side is and it's right near right at Soissons. Um, so I think that's Soissons or it's here here but anyway oh there it is Soissons right there so the red one is the Germans that's the most uh, sensitive spot for the Germans and the two green ones are the most sensitive spots for uh, the French after that I'm, I said okay you know what we're gonna do then we're gonna go into the secondary ones I'm gonna start looking later on at three hexes with broken terrain and I'm gonna try to figure out some ways of color shading or some ways maybe I'll have to uh, um, but what I want to do is get to a certain point where um, I've got a, enough overlay on this uh, so it'll be like from you know I can start seeing it over and over and over again in my mind so that way later on when I remove them I can just use my uh, my memory and overlay them on later and be able to see okay okay this is uh, you know a second I can start seeing where the the more vulnerable spots are without having to go through some big long analysis uh, that's it I think I'm trying to figure if there's any other uh, things I needed to uh, mention no uh, like I said um, oh yeah except about the patent thing uh, I am putting in a special restriction for a patin here. I'm going to have to reread it a bit more specific. Um, and it may be for me it's going to just be division. Uh, I don't know what it was historically, but I'm going to find out. From what I know about patin, the way he was doing uh, the th uh, with the troops was once uh, certain, maybe it was a brigade, like I said, I don't know. Um, but I remember reading anecdotes about it often. Uh, is that oh, some of them are pretty grim I'll give you one in a minute but uh, it was uh, like once a certain uh, size of unit um, suffered 50% 50, 50 casualties they were taken out of the front and uh, uh, fresh ones were rotated in uh, as far as I know that's what Patan was up to and you know, I'll give you the little grim bit is uh, one of the things I remember reading of an anecdote where soldiers and they were like this is this is just life um, any news today about the other bits of their units because they knew that once they got down to 50 percent they could get the they were going to get the hell out even though they weren't part of the combat kind of thing it was kind of grim so they were almost wishing you know and it's i mean that's it's life man anyway so that's it uh like i said i'm gonna it's yeah i'm just gonna take my time and uh, yet again it's fun as hell hope you're having a good time see you